In this video, I will be demonstrating you the event bubbling and event capturing which we have discussed just now, right? So we'll mock or we'll create a small uh, component which has different dev elements and we, I'll show you how the event is getting captured and event is getting bubbled out uh, and how, how can you catch those events in both the capturing and bubbling phase, right? So by default, in React, everything is in bubbling phase, okay? So if you want to capture an event, how to do that and how to attach event handler on the first place, let's see that, okay? So I'm creating a component, constant on click demo component, okay? On click demo component. And this component is going to return some HTML content, okay? So I'll try to create a uh, hierarchical box model so that how we can understand how the event is getting captured and how the event is getting uh, bubbled. So, okay. So first I'll have one div element. So I'll add inline styling to this, right? So this is how you do the inline styling. First style as a prop. Okay. And then since you are writing uh, HTML, I mean, since you are writing JavaScript inside HTML, you do the parenthesis, you do the flowers and then the normal CSS, which is you are passing as an object, right? So everything will be camel casing in React. It is a blind thing you can remember. And now I'll add a background color, background color as what I can say background color as blue. Okay. And some padding as 25 pixels. So if I don't mention anything, uh, 25, it is 25 pixels by default. Okay. So let me import that component over here. So instead of main component, I'll do on click demo component, right? And let me add a H1 tag, which says on click demo component. Right now, if I see my browser, I have one blue element, blue div. Okay, let me restrict the viewpoint viewport of this component uh, so that maximum width is in the is in the visual element, uh, visual aid. Right, so style. Now max width. So again, see max width. Again, I am putting it in the camel casing. So in React, everything is in camel casing. So I am resting it to 70, 720 pixels. And also margin, I'm putting it as auto so that it comes in the center, right? So all the sides margin is equal. Now, if I look into my browser, I, I'd see something of this sort, right? So I'll add one more div inside this, right? So I'll add div directly. So this is shortcut to add div element. So this div element doesn't really have any of the uh, children inside it or technically we should have a children. So let me add another div and I'm adding the styling property same, but I'll add a different background color so that I can differentiate. Here I'll put it as yellow, some bright colors, right? So yellow, right? And similarly, I'll add another div and this will have the padding as 25, but the background color to be green, right? And I can see this. So I can increase the padding a bit. So I'm doubling the padding so that uh, you will get to see each box a bit larger way, right? And the last div that is, uh, so here I can use the shortcut notation. This won't have any child. So style will be, here I will add the, curl purple or I can technically add white or red. Okay. So again, the padding is 50. So here now I have defined four div elements, one inside the another last one being the one with the background color red. So you can see this is the box created. So now I will explain or I'll showcase you how the event is getting captured and how the event is getting bubbled, right? First of all, you need to catch the 
on click event right so first i am placing the on click event handler so how do you place that so you just add it as a prop on click okay is equal to i am writing an inline function okay i am writing an inline function so how do i do that i am writing a arrow function okay arrow function and this says console dot log uh red box clicked okay this is nothing but red box clicked right so if i uh, now go to my web page right if i go to my web page and i click on it so see a red box is clicked right but as i said the event is propagating so i am clicking on the red box so only red box should emit the event right but my statements of that uh, every event in javascript is bubbled out so let me add that one as well so i'm adding a on click event handler over here as well so it is very simple on click on the left side which event you are attaching and on the right side in the flower brackets you just give the function which needs to be executed right so this uh, here i'll be putting as console dot log green box clicked so technically i am clicking on the red box but as the word event bubbling or event capturing is happening this even this on click event handler is called but by default all the events in the java react are bubbled out so it means first the event happens so when you assign the on click it means you are assigning the event handler on the bubbling phase okay so first red box clicked will occur and then green box clicked because in the bubbling phase it travels from the target to the top right so let me show that i'm clearing it out see red box clicked and then green box is clicked when i click on the green box so see only green box is clicked so it moves from green box to yellow box right so if i add all of these event handlers on all the dev elements on the all the dev elements right so yellow box clicked and blue box clicked right so in the bubbling phase uh, in the bubbling phase what will happen right in the bubbling phase the order of events is red box next green box because it travels from the bottom to the top green box yellow box and blue box so from the child to the parent right and let me add a on click event handler over here so on click demo component is a child one right so let's see what if i add on click event handler over here so i'll just console dot log as main component clicked okay so now if i go here and reload the page right i am clicking on the red box so see red box clicked green box clicked yellow box clicked over here blue box clicked and the main component so it reached till the top and it is going on to the top till the html tag so if i assign a on click or event handler over here oh it's not allowing me to edit on click and i'll try to write a function over here console dot log HTML body is clicked, right? So I edited it in line, uh, and if I see, no, it's not allowing me to add the content over there, but it's fine. So 
When I click on the red box, the event has been bubbled out from the red box to the green, green to yellow, yellow to blue and blue to the main component. Now this is the bubbling phase. So in the bubbling phase, the journey is in from bottom to top. Now let's say you want to capture the event. So you want to capture So first phase is capture phase and then the bubbling phase. So it is your choice when to capture the event or when to attach the event handler, right? So in that sense, let me add how to, uh, let me show you how to add or how to capture the event or how to attach event handler on the capture phase. So it is as simple as on click capture. So on click capture. Now console.log blue box captured. So I'm attaching the on click capture. So even when the red box is clicked, the event will be started from the parent to the red box. Right, that is the target. So I'm just adding on the capture on the blue box. So now let me show you what happens. So I'm clicking on the red box. So see first the blue box captured has appeared, right? I'm clicking on the green box. So it means the event capturization starts always from the parent. So blue box captured, yellow blue box captured. And now when I'm clicking on the blue box itself, so see blue box captured, blue box clicked and uh, blue main component clicked. So capturing phase two, bubbling phase. Sim now let me add uh, different scenarios. Okay, I'm, I'm capturing the event on all the phases, all the developments. Okay, let me change the text, yellow box captured, green box captured red box captured and right and I will add the one capture phase for the main component as well. Main component captured right. So now if I see the journey, if I see the journey capturing phase, right? So in the capturing phase, it always starts from the main component, main component, then blue box, then yellow box, then green box, then red box. So what happens? What is the order of console.logs I will see when I click on the red box? When I click on the red box, first, all the events are captured. First, all the events are captured, main component captured, blue box captured, yellow box captured, green box captured, red box captured. Once the capturing phase is over, now it starts bubbling up. Then red box clicked, green box clicked, yellow box clicked, blue box clicked, main component clicked. So let me change the text clicked to bubbled. Maybe it will make more sense. Bubble, right? So captured and bubble, right? So now let me show you, right? So I'm clicking on the red box. Now what will happen? From the top, from the main component, blue, yellow, green, red, 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 green, yellow, blue, main. See, main, blue, yellow, green, red, all in the captured. Now red box again bubbled a green box bubbled yellow box bubbled blue box bubbled main component bubble so, so that is how it is traveling right now let me ask you a question what happens what are the series of console dot logs you see when i click on the yellow box okay think think for a minute and come up with the answer right so yes so when i'm clicking on the yellow box what is main main component captured blue box captured yellow box captured then you will see yellow box bubble blue box bubble and main component bubble so this is how the journey this is how the journey is happening in any react click event or any event there comes so it is always 
captured and then bubbled up. So for ca capturing the or attaching event handler on the capture phase, you just do on click capture and on the bubbling phase, which is the by default case that is on click bubble, right? Now, uh, what we have, what we will do is we will add a input field. Okay, we'll add an input field. So input, input, and for input, what is the event hand event type which gets emitted when we type the value? That is on change, right? So on change um, is equal to right uh, console dot log. input element changed okay and this is bubbling input element changed in bubbling right so now since it is an on change event handler on change event no other on click or on capture will respond because nobody attached the event handler for there right now let me show you okay it looks a bit weird. Let me add it inside, right? So I am adding it inside the div. So it looks a bit cleaner, right? So the input element is inside the uh, red box. Now I'm typing, okay? So I'm typing some, uh, this is not a click it is uh, i'm typing i'm looking at the typing so click so see input element is changed in the bottom input element is changed is bubbling but the input element on change event handler is not bubbled or captured by any of the other entities other div elements right so see on change is just over here so on click and on click capture will respond only to their type of events and on change event is bubbled since there are no event handlers attached it means there is no uh, capturing or bubbling happening on the on change so let me add on change for all of these red box changed in bubbling right so let me give the space yeah so on change i'll similarly assign all of these green box and yellow box and blue box okay now when i type so see so see red box change in bubbling green box change in bubbling yellow box so the same thing. So whenever you attach the respective event handlers, those type of events are handled and you get to see the control lot logs, right? But one thing is that on every event which gets emitted, right? On every event which gets emitted, uh, there is an event object which is passed as an argument to the event handler that is E and to access what, so basically uh, people performs, right? Uh, when the username exceeds eight, it says, okay, something is wrong. I mean, you don't have your username shouldn't exceed eight letters. So let's implement that of situation over here, right? So to access that, what I can do is, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to access the, read the value inside the input element during runtime. So how do I read, read that? So if E dot target dot value. So this is where I receive. This is where I receive the input, the text which I'm entering, text which I'm entering in the input field. Let me remove all of these event handlers which are not needed now. Okay. So now let's focus on how to handle the events and how you can uh, capture the data and how you can validate it, right? And okay, let me show you one more thing in terms of this, right? So 
yes so blue box so if you want to stop the propagation from one place to another place right so let's say when the red box is clicked so when the red box is clicked i want to stop the propagation right so then in that case what i can do is i can simply call the function e dot stop propagation that's it so now what will happen is whenever in the bubbling phase the event starts at the target element it is not propagated to the topper upper elements so see now i'm clicking over here and refreshing the page right so since i stopped the propagation right so in the bubbling phase only red box bubble is seen not any other so that is very important so if you don't want to if you don't want to bug the event to travel all the way up because why it is traveling it means it is taking some memory and it is util utilizing the resources so if you know that you want to st uh, stop the propagation at that point then you can use the function e dot start propagation and similarly uh, the, in the capturing phase if you want to stop then what you can do you can again use the same e dot so every event handler receives this event ob uh, object as uh, argument and yeah so now i am stopping the propagation in capturing phase and stopping the propagation in the bubbling phase so see okay oh uh, one second So if I want to stop the event in the capturing phase, I have to implement that event dot stop propagation in the capture on click capture, right? So let me do that. E dot stop propagation, right? And console dot log. So this event will be captured over here, and then it is not moving on to the next event handlers, right? So if I see, if I click on the red box, only main component because that is the topmost component. I can even stop the cap propagation over here itself, right? That is e dot e dot stop propagation and main component captured, right? So I don't even have to stop the propagation over here. And now the stop propagation is also stopped at the root element itself. So it really. Uh, will have some bad effects because all your website is generating a lot of events, right? So now when I'm clicking on the red box, only main component is captured, right? So it has been stopped over there, right? So yeah, now let's start understanding how you can uh, deal with the input fields and how you can uh, validate the data, how you can capture the data during the runtime of the application. Let me remove all of these event handlers, right? So yeah, so on change. Now what I'll do is, what I'll do is if target, if e dot target dot value. So this is where I see my input field. So let me console.log first, console.log e.target.value, okay? And also let me console.log what is e.target object, right? So I'll remove all other uh, event handlers. Now let's focus on the on change and what will happen to it, right? So I refresh the page and I click on it and I change some value. So see, whenever I'm changing, so the on change event is getting fired and e dot target is technically the input field. So the target is te technically the input field and e dot target dot value is the value which I'm entering, right? So if I just console dot log entire e object, 
console dot log enter e object and I enter some value, right? So see, e object is this base synthetic event, okay? And by default, it has all of these properties: bubbles, cancels, cancelable, default prevented, and see target is the input. And inside the target, you have value, whatever value you are entering, and the value which currently has in the input field is var, vas, right? Similarly, you have rest all properties, rest all properties of that input field, etc. Right. So if you want, if the input field is of type files, so you'll have the list of files over here, everything. So you have access to the input field, whatever it is. Right. And now base. So whenever I'm changing, whenever the on change event is handled, I'm getting the updated value to my E dot target dot value. Right. So now let me show you e dot target dot value dot length is greater than four then what i'll do i'll give an alert message string length is too large so when the number of characters inside the uh, inside the element increases by length four then it automatically shows an alert message that is what we see in the normal forms, right? So if I show you now, let me refresh it, right? So I'm typing. So see, as soon as the length of string increase by four, we got this error message string length is too large. So this is how you control in the real time. So see, I was just typing randomly and suddenly I got this. That's it. So you can deal with the events very cool. I mean, you assign the event handlers and you uh, play around with a lot. Okay. So that is very important. And in case of class based components, one thing which you need to remember is that. So let's say if I, this component is a class based component, let me convert it into class based component, right? So I'm converting it into class based extends react dot component and render method should return this content okay render method should return this content and how do you attach the event handler so let's say i want to attach the event handler right now i have defined an inline function maybe your function has a lot of logic to submit the backend code, validate the backend response and all. So how do you attach the event handler? Is in the class based components, there are two cases, one, two things which you need to remember. First thing is, let's say on change handler, I'm defining a function on change handler. And this function does nothing. It checks if e dot if e dot target dot value if e dot target dot value uh, is dot length is greater than four then it shows an alert message some kind of logic whatever logic is dependent then string is too large okay the first case so if you directly attach this event handler like this this dot on change event handler let's see what is going to happen right so yes so this dot on change event handler is now working as expected okay so i'm just entering the text so in in the other way of executing uh, the thing i mean the other way of attaching the event handler in the uh, class based components is you define a event handler and then you assign this this dot on change handler right and if you want want to pass any arguments right let's say i have two input fields now right two input fields this is of type uh, This is of type uh, email and this is of type name, right? So I want to add both 
the same input handler. So I want to handle both of these with the same input handler. So basically in that case, I need to differentiate during the runtime, differentiate during the runtime, what element it is, right? What element it is. So in both of these cases, I'm calling the same on change event handler, but now I have to uh, pass an extra argument saying that this is email, this is email and this is text type, right? So in that cases, I can say, uh, I can pass an extra argument. Okay. I can define an arrow function and now I am passing an extra argument that is first you will receive the E object along with e now we are passing the e object and also the type as email so e and text right so now what happens the on change event handler will get two arguments that is type so if i just console.log where is the event getting triggered from i can see right so since both of these are attached to the same event handler. So the point here is how to pass arguments to the event handler. So one way is you define an arrow function inside and you capture it first and then you call the on change event handler, right? So if you now see two input fields, right? All these are emails and all these are text. So these are the most important things which you need to keep in mind guys regarding the event handlers and we'll see a lot of them being used in different different types of applications. So having a strong grip on entire events is very great advantage and always remember that in react the events are bubbled out and to capture it in any capture phase you use the on click capture keyword explicitly right.